What's going on guys? Welcome back to another Texas Chainsaw Massacre video. Today we have an extremely exciting update as a brand new Community Hub post was just dropped by Matt Shacha, which served as the official reveal of our in-game playable victims. Here you get a good look at just who you'll be playing as when taking on the Slaughter family, but each of these characters have their own unique backstory that not only establishes their relationships with one another, but correlate to how they will play in-game. Executive producer Ishmael Vison elaborated on this further, saying, When we sat down to think about the victims in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, we had two things we kept circling back to. Will people enjoy playing these characters as people, and do these characters make sense as a group that would be friends? The first question is really important. You've got to give them enough personality for players who latch onto while leaving room for them to identify with and inhabit those individuals. It means we dove as deep into thinking about them as we did the new family members. The second answer is helped along by the first. We wanted a diverse group of friends that would, surface level, strongly correlate to differing play styles. Thinking about those relationships, who is better friends with who, why are these two friends, helped us create a group that feels natural together, even if they're very different from one another. Now with all that in mind, let's actually go ahead and take a look at our five playable victims and their backstories. First, we have Julie. Julie is a Southern California native and fits every bit of what that description might bring to mind. Sand, surf, and sport lifestyle. The whether or not her life to this point has prepared her for the stress and strain of the experience it requires an entirely different type of toughness remains to be seen. Will her physical abilities be enough to carry her through an absolute nightmare unlike any other? Then we have Leland. While Leland might have wrestled in high school, college life is a long way from high school and his glory days of wrestling. Still, he is the toughest of the group, but what he has in strength, he lacks elsewhere. A native Texan and bit of a tough guy, but still no match one-on-one -on -one against the likes of the Slaughter family, and therefore his capabilities benefit from teamwork with his peers. Connie. Connie comes from a life on the farm, where she never shied away from the work that went along with it. While not quite what you'd imagine a tomboy to be, Connie relishes in being the type of person that will surprise you with her skills. She's crafty, intelligent, and ingenuitive. A natural tinker, her skills are more surgical than strong arm. Then we have Sonny. Sonny might have a slightly smaller frame, but he more than makes up for that with his intellect. The best student of the bunch is not only book smart, he's quick on his feet and quick with his decisions. Perceptive and intuitive, exceptionally situationally aware, Sonny will need to rely on his intelligence if he's to survive, and his friends would be equally wise to reap the benefits of his abilities. And last but not least, we have Maria's little sister, Anna. Anna is fiercely motivated and a natural leader. After losing her father, she and Maria help to take care of their mother while trying to forge their own paths as well. Now with Maria missing, Anna is done sitting idly by while law enforcement stumbles along. Determination and sheer willpower are her strongest suits, and she'll need every ounce of her resilience to endure. Now from reading their descriptions, you can already start to put together the ways in which these characters may play. Leland, for example, with a background in wrestling, will serve as the tough character in the group that will lack in other categories like that of intelligence, which characters like Sonny will make up for. Now, creative director Ronnie Hobbs elaborated on this a bit further, saying, When you take care to build out the personalities of this group of diverse but connected people, all of whom are emotionally invested in the search for Maria and bringing their own unique experiences and strengths to the group, their in-game abilities start to form organically. You've put so much into who they are that you start to visualize how they are. How will they react? What will they do in the situation they find themselves in? From there, it really becomes a matter of design and iteration to take those attributes and traits from their backstories and into their ultimate role in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Obviously, with each character having their own unique abilities and stats, the importance of teamwork is bound to be a pivotal role of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. However, that's not to say you can't survive on your own if it comes down to it. With five playable victims being confirmed today and knowing that only four victims will be in each game, Every choice you make, even before the game starts, is going to be extremely important. Now, which playable victim do you let sit out, and will that decision lead to your escape, or ultimately lead to your death? 
And at the end of this post, Matt shared a bit on this as well, saying, while these stories are just scratching the surface, we hope you are starting to see where these personalities intersect and separate, where they can work as a force, multiplayer, or balance equalizer. Knowing that we have five capable characters at your disposal for a four-person team means syncing up with the other players around you to either double their efforts or balance their shortcomings. Cooperation is the strongest tool at their disposal, but single-handedly, they all are capable of putting up one hell of a fight in their own unique and distinctive ways. So we still have a ton to look forward to as we really aren't sure what will go into surviving within the game yet, but it's great to see who we will be playing as and their unique backstories too. As we are bound to get these characters killed many, many times as players, it's always nice to feel maybe a little more pressure to keep them alive when you can at least relate to them a little bit and their stories. But hey, that's my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. But that's going to wrap up this video. If you enjoyed, make sure you drop a like and subscribe to our channel for more updates like this one. And of course, as always, thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.